In this first lesson on Ableton Live, I'll be showing you how to get started and show you the basic layout. And by the end of this video, you should be able to make some music fairly quickly here. So when you open up Ableton Live, you'll get something that looks like this. And uh, Ableton Live has two views. Um, there's this view where we see um, sort of lo looks like a mixing console, if you can imagine that. And we've got these uh, columns going up and down here. And then there's another view. If I go up here in the top right hand corner and I click on this, these two little tabs, I can go back and forth between the two views. And so uh, this is part of more of a traditional uh, DAW or digital audio workstation view in a timeline. So we have time going across from left to right. And then over on the right hand side, you, we can say, see that we have, in fact, two MIDI tracks, MIDI 1, MIDI 2, and two audio tracks, audio track 3 and audio track 4. On the left hand side of the screen uh, is a browser section. And so if you click on this thing called categories, we can get some different sounds and things from here. So. We'll be starting with uh, using drums to begin with. If you happen to not see this here, uh, it might be hidden. There's a little show hide browser button right there. So this little thing right there, if I click on that, that now shows me the browser window. So for right now, I actually recommend keeping that open. Um, then down way on the bottom left hand corner is a little help um, view. So as you move your mouse over things, this will tell you uh, what it is. So for instance, my mouse is over what's called the stop button right now. If I move it over a little bit, it shows me the play button. So this is really handy to have. If you don't want to see this, there's a little button right down here that hides it. If I want to see it again, I can do that. So, and then there's an area right down here along the bottom that we're going to talk about uh, uh, very shortly, actually. So we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and that's about it. Um, we've got sort of a transport area here in the middle. Uh, there's some more buttons and things over here, which we're going to learn about. Here's our tempo, which default is set to uh, 120 beats per minute BPM. There's also our temp, our metro, um, sorry, our meter. So here's our meter in 4.4. There's actually, this is a metronome. And then way over here on the right hand side, you'll see there's a little MIDI button. There's a key button. Uh, and other things. And there's this little uh, draw mode switch, which will come in really handy when we start inputting MIDI if you don't have a keyboard. Now, a couple things you want to do before you even get started. And that's, uh, so on a Mac, I'm going to go under Live and Preferences. And that takes me to this Preferences pane. If you're on a Windows machine, you'll have a window that'll look slightly different. You'll want to go under Options and then Preferences. And that'll open up the Preferences window. So that'll open up this preferences window. Uh, a couple places you want to go first is under this first tab under look and feel. This is where you can change how Ableton Live looks. Uh, so under the theme, you can change it to be very bright. So there's a light view, uh, the mid light, which is the default view, which I'll be using for these videos. Um, and there's actually a mid dark and then actually a dark. So I'll set that to mid light. The next tab we'll want to check out is under audio. And here is where we're going to set your audio uh, driver type, input device, and output device. So on a Mac, uh, I'm just going to keep it on core audio. So we're going to leave that the same. And your input and output device, this will be important if you have um, uh, something like headphones connected or anything like that. So right now you can see that mine says Duet USB. So I have my Apogee Duet 2. Uh, U, uh, USB interface connected. If I click on the output device, you can see that there's some other options here. Uh, there's my external headphones. So if you have external headphones connected to your computer, I would suggest using that. If you do not have headphones and you don't have an interface, uh, you could also use click uh, MacBook Pro speakers. For input device, uh, you probably don't have to worry about this for now. Um, you can set it to no device or set it to your MacBook Pro microphone for now, or, or if, again, if you have an audio interface, you can connect it to that as well. I would suggest working at 48,000 uh, sample rate. So you can leave all of these in the default settings. Uh, and then the last place to check 
is under MIDI, link in MIDI, is this is where you're going to want to make sure you check if you have your MIDI keyboard connected that you see it down here and that it's on. So here's my Alesis uh, VI61 and it's the input and I have it, it turned on. Uh, and then also for control surfaces, I have it selected here and I have the out and the in here. So that's very handy um, to make sure that this is all set up to your keyboard. If you have a keyboard connected to your computer, that it works with Ableton Live. And so now you can close this and we can begin working. So what we'll be doing in Ableton Live, at least to begin with, is creating MIDI clips on tracks and building uh, sounds that way. So I would actually suggest starting with, uh, so we have different, you know, the sounds tab, drums, different instruments, and we'll be going over all of these later. For right now, I would just su suggest grabbing one of these drums, and you can grab any one of these. I'll grab this Batu kit. And so to be able to hear this uh, within a track, I'm gonna click and drag it into a track. So if I drag it onto this first track, and you'll notice that this bottom window changed down here. So this is actually where the instrument loads in. And if I click on, so each one of these little boxes is a different sound that's loaded in the drum kit. I can hit the play button here to hear them. Okay, so that's all my sounds. So the next step in terms of creating music is I actually, actually I have to create a MIDI clip and so I can start drawing in notes. So the easiest way to do this is to click and drag with my mouse. And so I'll grab a certain region, about that much. And now we'll go under Create and say Insert MIDI Clip. The shortcut for this is Shift-Command-M on a Mac or Shift-Control-M on a PC. And now you notice my bottom window changed again. And if I want to see all these sounds, there's a little divider bar here. So I'm just going to click on here and bring this all the way up. So now I can see all these sounds that are loaded into uh, this track. And if I want to hear them, I can audition them by clicking on these buttons. Now I'm not hearing it because I actually need to cl click on this little um, uh, MIDI editor preview button, right? This little headphone. And now... I can actually hear the sounds. And so if I go up on the top right hand corner and click on the draw switch or this little draw button, I can actually start drawing in uh, notes. If I decide I want to delete it, I can just click on it again and it deletes it. Uh, if I decide I want to make it a longer note, I can move my mouse just slightly to the end and I get a little trim tool and I can make it longer. So if I want to hear what this sounds like, I can just hit the play button. Okay, let me add a couple more sounds, like some of these conga drums here. And I'll hit play. Now you'll notice that this is a longer note, but it really didn't uh, affect the playback. Often it doesn't for uh, a short sound, like drum sounds like this, but sometimes when you're dealing with different synthesizer sounds, it might change uh, that. Uh, I can copy and paste. So if I actually turn off the draw tool, click up here, and now if I want to copy all of this and paste it, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna go, I've selected it. So I just click and drag. And I go copy or command C. I click where I want to paste it in this clip and I can hit paste. And now I've pasted it. And now I have twice as much there. And I can do that again if I want, as many times as I want. I'm gonna hit command V. So you notice I'm kind of running out of room. So if I wanna see this whole area, uh, there's a little zoom feature down, way down here in the bottom. Uh, you'll sort of see that there's two tabs here. Uh, this tab that sort of looks like a miniature 
version of what we're seeing here is this is actually shows the MIDI clip. And this other tab shows me the instruments or effects that are in the track. So we have these two tabs for this bottom window down here. And it always, uh, this bottom area always uh, will show whatever in the selected track. So if I click on this track here, this second MIDI track, you'll notice that I don't really have anything in there. Well, I'm, this shows up because it remembers it from this other track, but that's not in this track here. So let me go back to this track, click on this clip. Now it's not showing up. If I double click on it, now it shows up here again. And so if I want to zoom in or out, I can click and drag up or down with the mouse and that brings it right so I can see the whole thing. Uh, and you'll also notice that there's some things along the top here in the clip. There's this bar here and I slide that. Uh, this is a loop point. So this is my beginning and ending of the loop point. And that corresponds to the numbers that are in here. So if I click on this number, you'll see that that bar changes as I move that. And then there's also a beginning and end time and I can change that as well. So uh, it just depends on how you want to work. Uh, what I tend to do is just use this bar to determine a loop point. So I'll grab the whole thing here and go to there. And I typically keep the beginning and end points the same as well. So this matches now. And uh, now I can move the clip if I want. Click and drag this and move it to different areas. And I can also extend the clip if I move my, so right now it's like a hand grabber tool. But if I move it to the beginning and end of the clip, you'll see that we'll get like a trim tool. And if I click and drag this, you'll actually notice that it's, this is much longer than the actual clip. And you'll see that's a little tick here, a little line. And what that means is this is being looped. This whole thing here is being looped. You'll notice my loop button is clicked. If I turn this loop button off, now notice that all that other information went away because it only it's not going to loop it at all. It's just going to play at one time and then stop. Even so I have all this other stuff collected, uh, selected. Turn this back on. And now I've got to actually go back in here and extend the loop. So that's a nice way to deal with loops in Ableton Live. So I'd actually recommend, um, you know, you can move the clips. I can also move them to other tracks. Of course, this won't sound anything right now. If I hit play, we're not hearing anything because I don't have a sound selected to in this track. So if I want to assign a sound, maybe I'll grab a different drum. This, where I'm going to grab this choral kit and drag it down into here. And let's see what we get. So it sounds like there might be some missing sounds here. I'm not sure. Oh, I see. It's just like there's some vinyl dirt. It's very, very soft. So let me pick something different. Let's like crushed ice and drag that and that's going to replace it now. And play that. Okay, there we go. So this is the instrument again. And if I click on this other tab, that shows me the MIDI information. All of this is editable. I can edit any of it. I can click and drag things, move them up or down, or into different places, or copy and paste them. I can also copy and paste clips themselves. So I select a clip like this. I say copy, click on another track, hit paste. So let's see what these tracks sound like together. I want to just hear the first track, I'll solo it with a little solo button, or solo the second track. If I want to hear both tracks together, I hold down the command key, now I'll place them both. If I just click on it again, just turn that on, and I'll hit stop. So that's the basics. That can get you working. So um, if you're not using these audio tracks, you can just hit them and hit your delete button on your keyboard. I'll hit it again. That gets rid of those. You can add another track if you want by just going under create and say insert MIDI track. And now we have another MIDI track in here and I can grab another kit, drag it in here and now start composing. Grab another clip or region, 
say insert MIDI clip. Here's my MIDI clip. Here are all the sounds. And I can hit my draw tool. The shortcut for draw is just on the keyboard, the computer keyboard is the B button, B as in Bob. Um, And there we go. And now we can start building different beat patterns uh, in our mix here. If you want to completely hide this, I can just go over here and click on this little triangle and that gets rid of that. So and I'm just looking at my tracks now and I can hit play. But then again, if I want to see it, if I just double click on a clip, it magically appears again. And again, I can change the side this way. So that's the basics of using Ableton to kind of get you started and uh, building beats and next we'll start talking about how to add other layers and instruments and things like that. So enjoy beginning working in Ableton Live.